Welcome. It's time for the further adventures of Indiana Jones. Sharing your adventures is an interesting experience. Pack your bag, grab your passport, and prepare to go globetrotting with Marvel Comics' classic four-color adventures of Indiana Jones. Jones? Jones! Dr. Jones, the eminent archaeologist. Hard to believe, isn't it? Ouch. Now, what shall we talk about? Welcome, IndieCast listeners and further fans to the Further Adventures of Indiana Jones. I am Joe Stuber, and he is Keith Boss. How you doing, Keith? (laughs) (laughs) Doing pretty good. Pretty busy. It's uh, always the same. We introduce the same. How do you change that up? I don't know. Uh, We need some like. Sometimes sometimes things just work the way they do. But (laughs) you know, I have to say, uh, I'm really glad that we're getting to the second part of our Herb Trimpy interview because let me tell you, this time around. We get into some pretty interesting topics. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, how do you follow up, uh, you know, Hulkbusters and and all that other stuff? But yeah, Herb does oh, it, and uh, he, we man, yeah. we had some fun on this one. We really yeah, we did. Sure did. Yeah, we sure did. And we we start talking about some, like I said, some controversial topics. Is that really Abner? I was well. There's a lot. When you say controversy, I think because when we when we when last we left Mr. Trimpy <laughs> in the Raven's Nest. Oh wait, I, has he been drinking the whole time we've been in there? It's like he, you know, might have been. Well, we were throwing free rounds around the whole time. Like it's like like it's good, water. We're missing out. We need to get in and get some drinks. But yeah, um, when, when last we left the interview, we were talking about uh, covers for 15 and 16. That brought us to the cover of issue 17, and as you mentioned, the controversy that lies therein. And especially after hearing Karen Allen herself on on uh, on the last indie cast say that she wasn't sure, she assumed that Abner was dead, and now this time, hmm, maybe we have confirmation Abner might just be alive. I don't know. I mean, that was not the only controversy that's involved uh, in these issues as well, too. So uh, why don't we head back into the Raven's Nest? Uh, he's getting lonely in there. We got. <laughs> Get back to Mr. Trimpy. And, and drunk. And, and <laughs> just man, this before is Before he yeah, passes we, out we, before he passes out, let's get back in there and let's see what talk. he has to say in part two of our interview with Herb Trimpy. Speaking of covers, seventeen, we've got Indy Mary and Ravenwood is back. Uh they're on horses. They're on horseback. They're in trouble. What do you remember about the search for Abner? This is the one where basically well, Marion and Indy go off and search, and she thinks her father might be alive, and he yeah yeah he yeah, kind of turns out to yeah. be maybe it's him, maybe it's not, but it's this sort of like masked guy at yeah. the end in the civilization that yeah okay. I wasn't crazy about this story actually. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Well, Joe, it looks like a GI like Joe story. Gee, Herb, it's funny you mention that. Because... <laughs> Why? Well, because Why? David David Michelini in his interview, he had, he had had a couple of scenes in there, but he said, again, Herb liked to draw planes, which, as we know from this particular interview, you do like to draw planes. He mentioned that there was a two-page pinup, mini pinup, of Indiana Jones and Marion Ravenwood at an air show that was supposed to be in this particular issue, but if you turn to the middle of the book, we have a two-page letters column. So uh-huh. David Michelini doesn't know what happened to the pinup. Do you know what well, happened I, to the pinup? No, I, I I remember the pinup. I I don't know. I, okay. I think I might have. I think I mentioned this at, at some point, but uh, not today. But um, <clears throat> I remember. Gee, was it a two? I remember a one-page pinup. With the two of them at an air show. Okay, it could have been a one page, and that would have left one page for the letters. For the letters, yeah, exactly. Yeah, they would have left one for the letters or other advertising or something like that. But I, Elliot has that. Elliot Brown. Elliot, Elliot Brown. Has that. You're yeah, sure that Elliot Brown has this? I, I gave it to him. <laughs> he wow. may, maybe he got rid of it. I don't know. Maybe we might told. have some more material for the Facebook page if Elliot we can track Brown's this down. Got some what? To do. <laughs> <laughs> what was the pinup? It was. <laughs> it, was, it was Indiana Jones and uh, Marion at an air show, and in the background is a pylon, and several classic racers from the 1930s are in the air and flying ar- around and past the pylon. 
Okay. And there, and there's an old car or an ambulance or something parked nearby, and crowds of people are coming in with their kids and all this kind of stuff. Do you recall eliminating any scenes to get that in? No. Okay. <laughs> I, again, fair and balanced. Want to give you a shot. I, I have to tell you one thing. Why? Why? why is, there some, <laughs> is there some discussion as to whether or not... Um, there were there was scenes removed. Michelini, like David, day. yeah, David Michelini said he had written some extra stuff, but if 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 for your space reasons it needed to be eliminated, you could eliminate he hates this part. Me, this guy doesn't he? I mean, I <laughs> love you. I I, we he were in a fight. Him. We were in a battle, and I didn't even know it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, well, I had no idea there was a battle going on. I mean, I kept. In all fairness, I did send you the links to the interviews ahead of time. <laughs> yeah. Okay. No, I'm. I'm gonna. You know, I. I just have. I'm gonna go through. I am definitely gonna go through those. Through those no times. worries. No worries. But no, no. I, I don't I, want people know. to think we ambushed you on the air on this. So no. But, but I do okay. want to be fair about that because it, he did mention his interview. But the funny, the 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 funny thing about that is, is that the the pinup never made it in. They they went to a two page letters page, so I got to yeah, talk well, to Elliot Brown about this. Well, you you see, David had some influence after all. <laughs> <laughs> well, but the, I mean, the, and in fact, he had he had precedent because he was a writer, obviously. The writer, yeah, like you said before, <laughs> the writers get all the credit. <laughs> Well, Keith and I want to find out what happened to this, yeah, this pinup sure. because I'm telling you what, if we can find this, oh, what what a Elliot treasure! Will, Elliot will let you. I mean, he would definitely send you a scan or He's, send you yeah, some sort of photo is, copy of it. He would be happy to do that. I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, we're well, sure. And if we he doesn't, to, I'll yeah. go visit him. Oh, all right, <laughs> all right. Hey, we gotta, yeah, if we could get no, the he would. He, he's he's very easy to get along with. Here's hey, what, he's a, Elliot's awesome. I. One of the well, you, you might guys might get around to it, but it, 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 it having to do with this, our separation from the book, you know. Yeah, I mean, um, well, let's we can... let's talk about that in a little bit. We've got two more okay. issues we want that, to get through. That's, I, that's what I was waiting you're, for you to hear. Yeah, you're not a fan of you're not a fan of the search for Abner, so that's okay. Keith, you think it's Abner? Uh, well, we've talked about this a few times already on the show, and yeah, personally, I, I like to think it is Abner. I yes. think it's Abner. Herb, can you just make us happy and tell us you drew Abner? I think it's Abner. Oh, yes. Oh, oh, that's, that's, there it is. Is. that's all I need. There it is. Actually, I just, while you guys were saying those comments, I went into a hypnotic, self-imposed <laughs> hypnotic state. And yes, it, it, it turns out in my subconscious, I know it as Abner. Most of our listeners go into a self-imposed hypnotic state while we're talking. Yeah, they're, the, yeah, they're probably down at a real bar by now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Since you made uh, since you made us happy fanboys, we will now go on to your <laughs> we will now go on to your two issues. Keith, this man that we're talking to pulled off the Indiana Jones, the Further Adventures of Indiana Jones trifecta. Yes, he did. He did the pencils. He did the inks. And he was the writer. <laughs> the Further Adventures of Indiana Jones, issue twenty three, The Secret of the Deep. And I'm telling awesome. you what. Awesome story. It is. Yes, it is. It is. <laughs> well, awesome splash page, because when you look at that first splash page, boy, we think Indian and Marion are in a heap of trouble. And then, as you referenced earlier, they're just watching a movie. Yeah. That's great. That's, That's a great opening. If only I could draw better. <laughs> well, why so? How do you figure? Huh? How do you figure? Well, oh, it's a it's a pretty good elephant, I must say. Okay, I mean, do you have pro- do you have issues with with uh, what you drew there? No, no, I you know I, I I'm still sort of in my my you know cartoony um, uh, Jack Davis mentality these days. Even these days, I just can't I can't get away from thinking like that. Uh, well, I think it's a great switch up, and uh, you know when we go through here, and then we actually have. Uh, I love how it opens. It's the latest chapter of the Ace Drummond serial. That's actually a 1936 film serial. Mm-hmm. Did you? So you were you familiar I, with that? I researched. Uh, okay, of course. Yeah, I researched yeah. it. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, that was. The, I, I wanted to ask you when uh, you I sit down. You. Yeah. Sorry. So I wanted to ask you when you sit down and you plot out an Indiana Jones story. What's the first thing that goes through Herb Trimpey's mind? 
airplanes. <laughs> Air- <laughs> <laughs> I'm staring at you. Michelini was right. Michelini was right about you. I, I never forced it on anybody, though. They, they were, uh, you know, Elliot, he, he, he just wanted, you know, I, I never, ever asked, you know, forced any uh, scene. Um, well, I, I won't say never. I mean, I, you can't say never, you know. <laughs> but. <laughs> Because it goes back, it goes back a long way. I can't even remember what I ate yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, um, uh, it's it's I I don't know. I, I just don't I, I don't I don't remember ever imposing. Uh, you know, oh, let's draw airplanes. No, they Larry or Elliot. You know, these these, these technical guys would all say you. Let's okay. You like airplanes? Let's put this in there, or let's do that. Yeah, but it fits you know? in with the world of Indiana Jones. Well, it, of course it does. That, it absolutely does. So we don't so, have a problem with it, and I don't think anybody involved would have had a problem with it. I, I it's, don't a, it's know. funny to David hear. David had well, a problem with it. <laughs> they didn't have a pro- I think no. I think David had a problem with it. <laughs> maybe maybe the pinup. A- maybe the pinup. Yeah. That might have been the only one. But we've got elephants. We've got elephants in issue 24. But, and but we didn't do the pinup anyway, so. No, but we'll, we'll find it. We'll find it for the listeners. Yeah, but, yeah, great gonna... stuff here. I, again, I love how you – and correct me if I'm wrong, but as you're looking back through these issues too, did you draw Marion a little bit differently or was you, were your drawings a little bit different in the issues that you wrote because it looks like a little bit different, Marion. It looks like that little bit of cartoony animated style, and I think it works. Um, gee, I you mean her face or yeah, like uh, pay, the third page there, where her, she and Indy are fighting in the car. There, it, it's sure. Yeah, it looks a little bit different than some of the other issues, but I think it's kind of cool. Mm. I just didn't know if that was a conscious effort on Who your part. This? I did. <laughs> yes, you, you did the trifecta. And this was my thin pen inking t- phase. So the okay, so that that is going to make a bit of a difference, then, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay, so that is yeah, purely your Marion, which we I, I kind of like. Oh that yeah, animated, absolutely. I kind of like that I, animated style. Do you have you been have you identified the movie stars in here? Well, that's what we wanted to ask you about. Before we get to that, uh, flipping over one page, again, two dead on Harrison Ford, Keith. Yeah, for sure. On, on uh, wh- which page? Uh, page four of uh, this particular issue. After they're done fighting oh, yeah, the car, yeah, and Indy kind of says goodbye to Marion. Yeah, it's good. Oh, I, boy. I, that's all mine. I'm not buying <laughs> that Harrison Ford was tough to draw. Uh, yeah, it looks like you made it easy. Yeah, I, I, he has a certain kind of face that... Uh, you know, it's not like a square-jawed face. Do you remember using any particular reference for this issue? Oh, yeah, really I had photos. I mean, I didn't draw that from my, my head, no. Okay. Same with her. I was using photos, you know. It almost looks a little bit like that scene in um, the the deleted scene from Raiders, Keith, with uh, the kiss in uh, the Raiders. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yes, it does. Yeah, you know what? I didn't... Uh, wow, I didn't even think about that before. Yeah, I'm going to bet... Cool. Yeah, I'm going to bet that that's what you went off of there, but... The uh, coloring in this, I mean, it... it, it you know the the movie theater coloring is great, and the and the the splash page, or the second page with the credits. Rob Carousel is redeemed. No, no, they, no, it's awesome stuff. But yeah, he's redeemed. Yep, he did the the earlier stuff too. So yeah. So is is Stephanie the the actress? Is is she based on somebody? Because she looks yes. awfully familiar. Yeah, she is. She's Clara Bow. Uh-huh. Okay. All right. Okay. She's so there's one. That's right. All right, so That's... when Indy gets to the movie studio, we've got and I, I got Clark, Clark Gable. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm um, drawing a blank on the others. Can you help us out? You see the one behind Clark Gable? Yeah. Gloria Swanson. Okay. Uh, uh-huh. And then how about um, the panel below it? Okay, Jimmy Stewart. Oh, Keith, how did I wow. not get that? How did you not get that one? I'm the biggest Jimmy wow. Stewart fan. I'm sorry, Mr. I'm sorry. And behind her. him, Catherine Hepburn. Yep. 
Catherine and Hepburn. I, I, <laughs> Sorry. I'm not, I, I, I know who that is behind it, Catherine Hepburn, but I forgot her name. Um, uh, I know the actress. It's not Myrna Loy, is it? No, 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 no. Okay. Uh-uh. She's around the same time as Catherine Hepburn. She's a uh, 40s actress. Okay. You know, 50s. All right, so little uh, behind-the-scenes Easter eggs here we got. What made you choose to set this sort of in a Hollywood-type setting? Because um, it, it, that period in Hollywood was a very exciting time. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the days of the studio mo- uh, moguls and, you know, the movies they produced in the same time that it took to produce uh, one television sitcom series uh, episode, you know, I mean, it's just, it's like incredible the way they racked them out in those days, you know, and, and they were very good at it, and uh, uh, I, I, I just, you know, fascinated by that scene. Uh, so what I really like, in, like in some of the Charlie, Ch- uh, Charlie Chaplin movies, what's really neat is since the, a lot of the outside, uh, all the outside scenes are local, and you can get a really good uh, idea of what, you know, it looked like where where he was filming and the feel of it and the houses and, the you know, the California-style houses and the lawns and the sidewalks and the cars in the street and all. I mean, it's it's great. So I, I, I really do like that that kind of thing. I, I love the back in time stuff. I love, you know. I mean, if you, you, people think of history as, you know, it's done, it's over, it's gone. But it, it you know, there's still there's there was a life in it, you know. And then people lived and died the same as now. And, uh, and there's still so much left to explore. And there's so much left to explore. We don't look at we don't look at the past as a place where people actually lived. <laughs> Do you know right. what I mean? Right. We, we, we see it as uh, more of a history lesson or... A, as a story or, yeah. As a yeah. history book or, you know, or something that wasn't quite as good as it is now, you know, that kind of thing. But that's simply not true. I mean, it's just not true. There were other times in history where, believe it or not, the quality of life was better, <laughs> you know? <laughs> it was actually better in some places and times than it is now for the average person, you know? Hey, in this story here, how did you come up with Lord Harry? He's the guy that tries to take uh, the crown of Rurik away from India. Oh, yeah. Again. Well, that's, that's, that's a white version of Cracker Jack Jackson in the Hulk, the uh, hobo Cracker Jack Jackson. Yeah. With the top uh-huh. hat. All right. Okay, so a little bit only, of the a little bit of the Hulk coming into. He's, for a, he's a kind old, old gentleman, and this guy is uh, kind of a mean, nasty son of a. He's a, he's a mustache twirling <laughs> villain, I think. Yeah, yeah. You know? That's what he is. <laughs> yeah. That's basically oh. what he is. You know. So very interesting take on Indiana Jones to kind of use him as a stunt man. Uh, in this, which is which is kind of interesting too, because in Raiders of the Lost Ark, Harrison Ford did a lot of his own stunts. As mm-hmm. you go through, did that play into it all, or what was the theory behind maybe of using Professor Jones as a stuntman to to kind of get this MacGuffin? Well, I, I know that uh, I enjoyed using throwing uh, the character around. I, I thought that was essential, an essential element in any story that involves Indiana Jones. You don't really want a lot of headshots with people talking and discussing and stuff like that. You need him doing that, you know, all this Jackie Chan stuff, you know, mm-hmm. the awning and then the pile of boxes and then the ladder upended and then up the ladder and then across the <laughs> shingled roof and the shingles flying in the bad guy's face. And, you know, that, you got to knock I, him around a little bit. Yeah, yeah. No, that's <laughs> I love I really do enjoy that kind of thing. What did you think about Michael Golden's covers? Michael Golden is one of. I, I, I've i seen him a lot, <clears throat> and every time I see him, I say, Michael, that NOM stuff you did, that's the most accurate feeling for soldiering and war in Vietnam that I have ever seen, and that includes all those movies that they made, mm-hmm. like Full Metal Jacket and, you know, Platoon and some of the others, you know. 
I mean, he's really got it down. I mean, it's so good, the equipment and everything. Yeah, it, it sure is. I actually got to interview uh, Michael Golden uh, a few mm-hmm. years ago and got to talk to him about these covers. And yeah, yeah fantastic. incredible stuff. No, he's and good. also, he's really, yeah, he, he really is incredible. He was, he was also a great guy to talk to. He drew Indy's he socks. He drew Indy's quitter socks. <laughs> <laughs> That's a detail that 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 gets lost uh, with with a lot of artists. That's my favorite sure. part of the cover. That's a that's great stuff. Great stuff. It um, certainly is. Uh, let's talk a little bit about issue twenty four. Um, yeah. The Revenge of the Ancients. What do you remember about uh, about the story and and doing the breakdowns of of this issue? So I got I wrote these probably because David left. Is that the reason? Well, that's what we want to ask, because um, 19 to 22, you weren't around. Michelini came back for 26 and 27, so in between... We you, were gone. Yeah, but you, you, you were on 23 and 24. Who made the decision to get rid of Elliot and myself? Any idea? I know Shooter fired Elliot. Right. Uh-huh. He made that clear. He said definitely Shooter fired him. So how did that affect your time on the book? Well, I was gone. Once Elliot was gone? Yeah. Okay. It, was, it, was, it was like Mass you know, guilt by association. No, what I want... Uh, Jim Shooter, he was... I got along very good with him. Yeah, in fact, I took him now, for a ride in my, my airplane. Ralph Macchio and, and was on that. the editor on this book that you wrote. Hmm. So how did that... Do you recall working with Ralph Macchio? I don't know. I, I just, uh, Elliot and I, all I remember is that Elliot and I were, were bonding. We had a, we felt like we really had something good going here. And, uh, there in fact, uh, was another story plotted that was never used that I plotted. And I don't know who was going to write it. But, um. Where is that uh, story? Uh, well, the reason it was. The reason it wasn't used is because the movie Temple of Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom was coming out, right? Mm-hmm. which I hadn't heard or read a thing about it at that point. I didn't even know there was another movie being made. But the similarities between the story that I did and the movie plot is is frightening. <laughs> okay, so where, I'll ask again, where is the plot... <laughs> For that particular issue. Oh, I have no idea. I have, Is that something you, know, you would have sent to Elliot? It's in my head. Oh, it was never. Uh, it was never. It never got beyond. Yeah, that. I did. I, it was. It was all plotted out. It was all written down okay. on, on yellow. Yeah, paper. I wanted to ask if you had any other Indiana Jones stories actually plotted out, ready to I go. I might. Actually, I, I never thought of that. Are you guys interested in plots? Absolutely. Like actual, sure. Physical sure. plots? Absolutely. Yes. I, I may I, I may have some stuff like that around. I don't know. Oh, you can find any I'll of that. I'll have to check because I never, I, I never, uh, I, I have frequently saved uh, ideas for stories and sometimes even the scripts that, or rather the plots that other uh, art, uh, writers have given me. But I you know, they all went into a file cabinet, which is now out in the garage. There may actually be some stuff in there. I mean, it's very uh, again, awesome. the warehouse scene at the end of Raiders. Yeah. <laughs> we go through, we hear this oh. from some, we've got Michelini digging for stuff. We've got Elliot Brown digging for stuff. Dan Reed's looking for <laughs> stuff. Carrie Gamble. Carrie Gamble, Carrie Gamble, Carrie Gamble found us, cool he stuff. found us some unpublished Temple of Doom artwork that he did. Oh, my God. So you've turned us all into a bunch of archaeologists. Oh, <laughs> hey, that's what we do. That's what we do. Well, yeah, if you find that stuff. And that's what I'm wondering about Revenge of the Ancients. I'm wondering if this was something that you had sort of in your back pocket, and then it was released, and then maybe you weren't working directly with Ralph No, I, you know, this stuff I did, I, I did, they just came right, right off the top of my head. Okay. You know, I mean, well, what just, I like about this particular issue is second page, we've got those vertical panels that you did. It reminds us a lot of uh, the artwork of Gene Day. Yeah. That he was working. Do you recall mm-hmm. being influenced? Because that's very different than what I, you've done before. N- n- on which the second page? Second page of issue yeah, those 24. Long, those, those, those vertical um, the panels. Cinema, cinemagraphic, cinematography type. Yeah, it's no, sort of like those uh, no, five vertical I, I do panels. this a lot. 
Okay. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's in the last. It's actually in the last page of the previous story too. So I break. I, I broke up stories in the Hulk all the time like that. I mean, mm-hmm. I just. Okay. Yeah, we have a little. Bit, I don't know why I did it. I, I, I a little vertical panels there. Yeah, I mean, you'll you'll find that in any any where there's a, a, a quick. Uh, where there's an event that takes place where by it would be interesting to show the shots that you don't see, the middle, the interim connecting shots, mm-hmm. because usually it's it's usually something that happens in a fairly short period of time. You know, you don't break it down like that if it's if it's like three pages worth of artwork, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, or, or action, rather. I noticed you keep the, again. You keep the hat on the whole time, which is pretty cool. That's a plus. <laughs> it's a plus in our. I book. mean, that's it's him. You know, I mean, how could people not want to put the hat on? Geez. Yeah. I mean, you're talking about the guy here. This is the guy. This is the real thing. This is the, the real deal, right? Did you see any of the other movies? Last Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade and Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. I don't think I saw Kingdom of the Crystal Skull because they were kind of. In my mind, they were kind of tapering out as far as quality went. I mean, I, frankly, I, I I don't see many sequels of anything unless uh, I'm a, my my son now is has always been a very good advisor <laughs> as to whether or not the <laughs> sequel's any good, and uh, and then I'll and then I'll see it. Uh, uh, I frankly, anything that involved uh, indie, I you know I would be interested in seeing, and um, I, I it might have been just because I was didn't get around to it or just waited too long or you know who knows why you know. What but, would you do uh, with the character today if if uh, if Marvel called? Which same thing? Okay, <laughs> pretty much same thing. Keep yeah. him in the thirties. Oh yeah, ab- absolutely, mm-hmm. absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, Maybe play up. See, one thing in comics you can get away with, you can't get away with in a novel. If you're writing in a novel, something, a, t- a time, a period piece, it just gets so hokey if you keep name dropping and throwing facts about how a newspaper costs three cents and, you know, all this kind of, you know, all, all the details in that time. Uh, it's interesting if you read a the detective novel I wrote, it takes place in New York in the 1930s, and you got to be real careful about dropping stuff. It gets to be laborious after a while, dropping information about facts about the times that would make people compare, you know. But in a comic, you can get away with it, page after panel after page after panel. <laughs> Just putting in stuff that reflects um, the difference, because... Uh, basically, it's a visual medium, you know. Yep. So a- anything, anything that lends itself towards uh, proving that is is good. Where you run the risk of taking away from the story in a novel because you know, it's in a, in, a, in a visually it's it's incidental, but everything you write is equally important, you know. <laughs> uh, tell us what you're up to now. Okay, uh, David Lloyd does a uh, check out um, uh, Aces Weekly online. It's a real good uh, comic book online uh, website with some very very talented people and a wide variety of artwork that's being done. And he asked me uh, last year at some point whether I wanted to do something or not. So I am, and it's almost near completion. It's going to be. Uh, up with the, the way it works is this: it runs for seven weeks, and there's three installments each week. So there's 21 segments to the entire, or uh, if, if it were a comic, it'd be 21 pages, formatted to fit the TV screen or any other way you want to do it, and uh, uh, the computer screen. Uh, I mean, my only problem with online comics is is that it is some kind of interim form. Uh, I, I don't think it will ever stand as you know as it as it is, just basically taking artwork and putting it on a screen. Uh, although it's you know it can be interesting enough, I think it's got to go some steps beyond that before it will um, you know maybe really replace the printed printed comic book. Uh, 
and of course, there's animation, and that but animation is a thing in itself. Right. But I think a really neat thing to have with an online comic is no words or no captions, but voiceovers. People mm. that do voices like radio. Mm-hmm. Interesting. And, so give us that website again. It's Aces Weekly, and David Lloyd is the uh, is the um, is the organi- He's an artist, a British artist. He's very good, Great. and I think he had one on it. And there's a bunch of people, and I'm slated for this month. Oh, very good. We'll put a link so to that I'm up on the website. I'm finishing up the last few pages now, but they'll probably be underway before I get them to them. Sounds but it's uh, it's retro. You know, they're all airplanes. <laughs> <laughs> well, we wouldn't expect anything else. And it's, do you have any uh, up- upcoming com- uh, convention appearances? We're going to be Boston on May 4th for a signing. And then Ottawa, May 10th. San Jose, May 18th. Um, Ireland, May 30th through the 2nd. Wow. Probably the Albany show, June 16th, not sure. But Texas, um... 20, June 21st, Pittsburgh Festival, not the show, but it's uh, uh, an art festival in Pittsburgh uh, in July, first week. Cool. Baltimore, September, and I believe the Pittsburgh show in September, 27, 28, and 29th. Well, we've got the rundown there, so people know where to find you. And mm-hmm. we've got the issues. We've got the Further Adventures issues, six of them. During this run, and we've got Herb Trimpey in the Raven's Nest. Mr. Mm-hmm. Trimpey, it has been a real treat to have you as our well, guest today. Well, for me as well, but I have to, I have to suggest one thing. Okay. You More need drinks? To open a <laughs> Raven's Nest. An actual Raven's Nest. <laughs> you have to do that, yeah. You have to do that, and, and the whole theme, get all your ducks in a row with uh, permission and so on. Theme it after Indiana Jones, and I guarantee you will be, and and I'll be there too. You'll be our that first guest. Great. Hey, maybe we'll have to do that at one of the uh, one of the conventions. We'll open a, a pseudo Raven's Nest and and have everybody come on by. That's a great. It, you know, it's really a good idea. I you know yep. to do that. Let's make it happen. Um, I think we've got our first VIP guest at the I table. So. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. You will be there. Well, you Mr. Know, Trimby, there will be free gifts. <laughs> well, so just as an incentive, you know. Did you say free drinks or free gifts? Well, uh, both. <laughs> <laughs> well, the free drinks are up to you guys. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Hey, hey, if you show up there, I'd be more than happy to buy. Uh, All right. Maybe, maybe we can get Karen Allen, Miss uh, Ravenwood herself, there. Oh my God, that'd be awesome. That would be cool, Mister Trimpey. Thank you so much well, uh, for joining yeah. us today, yeah, and yeah. Um, and thanks for these issues. Uh, they're they're a pleasure to read. You know, my pleasure, to say the least, guys. I, 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 you guys are running a great podcast here. Thank you. Well, oh, appreciate <laughs> that. Uh, well, there you have it, Further Fans. Our interview with the legendary Herb Trimpey. And we really want to thank him again, uh, once again, for spending some time with us in the Raven's Nest. Keith, act. thoughts <laughs> on that fun time we had with Mr. Trimpey? Uh, yeah, he's, he's just a class act, isn't he? I mean, he... Wow, where, where do you even begin with all? Oh, sense of humor. Yeah, he's just such a <laughs> funny guy, and, and he's an indie fan. You could tell he really loves the character, yeah. and and, and uh, especially that first movie. I mean, if, if anything, we got to get him to see the the other ones. But um, yeah. yeah, you know, he he mentioned quite a few interesting things, um, especially like those those lost indie plots. I mean, how desperate are we to get our hands on those indie fans? God, I would love for him to just all of a sudden pull out like a, a folder full of like all these plots that he came up with and 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 see where Indiana Jones uh, the further adventures of Indiana Jones could have could have been propelled well, um, how many how many times do we hear that too is that the, these creators that we're talking to it's like yeah I had a bunch of stuff here and stuff either they left the book and but, I mean you're you're plotting these things and penciling these things ahead of time and coming up with ideas so whether their time on the book ended or the book itself, we know had a you know limited shelf life. So um, there's a lot of stuff out there, and man, head to the Facebook page when we're finding this stuff. We we put it out there. So yeah, we'll have to check back in with Mr. Trimpey and see if he found anything. Hope he did. <laughs> and one other person we have to check in with is Elliot Brown. Apparently, oh so yeah, yeah. Apparently he has that uh, that pinup 
according to Herb Trimpey, but um, – In the Raiders' warehouse. In the Raiders' – yeah. In, in, in Elliot Brown's – Well, Elliot Brown's really come through lately. I mean he sent us um, – Big time. He sent, a, he sent us a couple of uh, interesting things recently. So maybe if he digs a little deeper, who knows? Who knows what he'll find? But when he does, if he does, when he does, uh, you could be sure that we will bring it to you, the further fans. And confirmation, I think – Everyone thinks it's Abner. At least we've talked everyone <laughs> into thinking that it's Abner. So. Well, you know, I, close again, enough for me. Again, another controversy that has been debunked. I think uh, we seem to have a lot of. Yeah, you're right. A lot of people have been saying, "Yeah, I think it's Abner. It's Abner. It's Abner." Um, I mean, let's just say that it is Abner at this point. But I don't know. Is it better that we leave it a mystery? I, well, hey, you know what's going to be fun is when we get to those issues. We're we're coming up on issue fifteen next. We're going to be getting into those issues coming up. But I want it's going to be fun to hear from the listeners uh, to hear what they think. Poll. We should set up a poll on our Facebook page. Oh, how about it's, an indie opinion? An indie opinion. That's right, Rob Maybe McGee. Should, let's get an indie set opinion. That Maybe up. That, that that battle royale. Is it Abner? Is it not Abner? Oh, that so, would be who, interesting. Who wants to, oh, we both think it is. So yes. you know, when we yes. get to those issues, if you don't think it's Abner. Take us on. Maybe we can uh, get into Rob's uh, indie opinion. It just opens things up for so many more possible stories. Abner still being around. That would be so cool. Okay, that's it for the day then. Well, class is dismissed. That's all the time we have for today. Further fans, Keith, what do we have coming up next time? We got a really exciting issue coming up. Issue number 15, The Sea Butchers Part 1, and the return of some classic characters. If you guys have any thoughts about this upcoming issue... You know the address, thefurtheradventures at gmail.com. And, Joe, I look forward to tackling the Sea Butchers Part 1, Issue Number 15, next time on The Further Adventures of Indiana Jones. Indiana Jones.